I'm gonna start at the very beginning. Where's the script? How do you launch it? So after you install it, you're gonna wanna restart After Effects. You can go up to Window here, and then all the way down, and you'll see Puppet Tools. So click that, that'll launch a script, and you can, you know, like dock it over here like one of these guys, or you can float it around like some floaty guy. Hey, whatever works for you, that's cool with me. Fundamentally, this script is just two buttons with a bunch of settings down here. And the reason it's that simple is because I'm not very smart and I like things to be super easy. So I want this to be easy for everyone to use as well. So you have two main buttons and you set up everything however you like, that's kind of it. So let's talk about the first button here, create controllers. Okay, so what does this do? Um, so if I go down here and I select my sweater arm, you can see there's a puppet effect on it. Okay, and if we twirl all the way down here, oh my God, it's so far. There's like three pins for a wrist, elbow, and a shoulder down here you can't see, okay? And if you wanna animate with this stuff, it's, it's cool. You can like dig down here and grab stuff and you're like, hey, this is great until not really because it's really hard to use. This is where my script comes in. You select this layer, you hit controllers, create controllers, <laughs> and then look, you get pretty cool controllers that are connected to each pin. And I think that's pretty great. And here comes my dog in the background. Okay, so that's how you use the script in, in essence, right? But there's some other ways to use this too. So let's take a look at our hand down here, okay? So no effects applied to it, I just have like a disembodied hand, pretty weird. So if you run the script and there's no pins or anything on it, you hit create controllers. Cool, it just creates a controller at that layer's anchor point and it parents it to it. So you kind of just have a basic controller that you can easily make for any layer, right? Comes in handy. Okay, so what else? You can also use this script on shape layers. And just kind of heads up, you have to be using Adobe After Effects CC 2018 or newer. Um, this was the version that uh, they gave us access to all the kind of path vertices and shapes and stuff like that. So, um, you know, you can run the script in an older version just fine. You just won't be able to do this next part with the vertices. But let's assume that you are for a moment, okay? And you want controllers to kind of change how the shape animates here. So if you twirl this down to contents and you go into whatever path and you select path down here in the left, then you hit create controllers. Look at that. Hey, we can control vertices now with controllers. And I think that's super awesome and long overdue because this really opens a lot of doors for how to animate with shape layers. This is, there's like so much cool stuff here you can do because you can animate all this stuff and then you can still like, you know, change the stroke width and stuff like that. And oh, it's locked like this. So as you're animating, it's, it's just like, I don't know, it's really pretty great. And then you can parent these to other things too, which I think is the real fun part. Um, so a lot of options here. Now let's talk about, let's go back to our sweater here for a minute. And let's talk about settings and what all this stuff means, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna undo, get all of our controllers gone. Okay, now, so we select this arm again, we hit controllers, you get these three white boxes. But they're a little big, they're not the right color, and I, I don't know, like, I just want them to be different. So what the settings do is let you change how your controllers look and behave with each other. So let's take it one thing at a time. So controller type. You drop this down and you get a few different options. So you can make a null, you can make a square shape layer, you can make a circle shape layer, or you can make a, a solid. Okay, whatever whatever you want. And they all come in as guide layers, so they're never going to render. It's just a preference, you know, whatever you like to work with. I'm gonna go with circles because I'm feeling some circles today. And let's try that. Okay, cool, so we have circles. But they're a little too big, so I'm gonna undo and I'm gonna go over here to controller size and just cut that in half to 75. Let's see how that, yeah, yep, yeah, that's better. This is a lot easier to work with. Especially when you have a whole character rig set up here, you don't want like 10,000 controllers that are all 400 pixels like overlapping each other. It's, it's really annoying. That makes it pretty easy to customize the size and shape. All right, so I'm gonna undo because I wish they were a little easier to see over this. I want something that has a little more color contrast. So I'm gonna go down to control color. And if you know your hex number, all you web developers out there, you can just kind of plug it in here. Otherwise you can use the color picker and just kind of, you know, select something that speaks to you. 
I'm going to go with a neon green. Okay, so let's look at this. There we go. I like the controllers. They're really easy to see. This is working for me, okay? So that's just the first three controls here. Now, if you take a look down here in the layers, the controller names, okay? So by default, uh, if you're using puppet pins, the, the kind of naming order is gonna be whatever the layer is, so in this case, arm, and then whatever the name of the puppet pin is, so you know the actual name on the effect is wrist, and then you're gonna get a unique controller number, which kind of we have to do for a lot of reasons. Um, one, two, and three. Let's say I want to change the name of that stuff. I, I don't want it to be that, okay? So I'm going to undo. I'm going to go down here to naming style. And there's a little like tool tip here that tells you, you know, how exactly to do this. But in essence, you know, you want to have the word control somewhere in there, um, but you can change the order and whatever name is, that's what will show up down here. So if you want to call this like um, sweater arm and control, then we hit create controllers. Okay, and now down here you see we get sweater arm, wrist, elbow, one, two, three, right? And so you can also change the order of this stuff. Uh, so I'm gonna go control, comma, sweater arm. You can flip it around that way. It's like, cool, you do that. Or if you just like don't want anything or you just want something really like, let's try this, just a little dash, right? Wrist, one, two, three, okay, cool. So that way, you know, if you wanna like minimize your layer name in the UI, you can kind of use something really short that's still recognizable. You're not committed to some long, crazy, crazy name. Next thing, parent chain order. Okay, so what, is, what does that mean? All right, so if we create controllers again, right, you'll notice down here that you get these three controllers. They're all kind of independent of each other. No parenting going on. You move one, it just moves the one, the other stay there. If we undo that and we do parent chain order, what this does is when the script creates each controller, it'll parent them in a sequence that you provide. So you can do like top down, bottom up, or alphabetical. So if we're doing this arm, for instance, let's pick top down and then we'll make new controllers, okay? And so now you can see over here that the wrist is parented to the elbow, the elbow is parented to the shoulder, and the shoulder kind of like rules them all, all right, okay? And so now when you, let's connect our hand first. So I'm gonna parent the hand to the wrist real quick. So now when we take this and then we like do a little rotation, uh-huh, we get a kind of bendy arm, like a little FK going on. And you know, this is something you can start to work with to get like a good looking animation, you know? Um, and you can always change the order afterwards if, if you want. Um, but this this little option in here is just, nice to have in case you know you know you're going to do that and you want to remove that step from your process and just kind of automate it. Um, next thing, master controller position. What is that? Basically, master controller position is like you build your rig for the arm, right, let's say, and um, it, oh, I'm gonna undo one thing. So we're not gonna parent them. We're gonna run the controllers. And I'm gonna say, cool, I like all this, but I really wanna like move this whole arm and connect it to a different thing. And you can like, you know, do this and drag them all around, but that's kind of obnoxious. So with a master controller, if you create one of those and you say, let's say we'll put it at the first controller and you run it, what it does is you'll notice we get this like extra big one over here now. And what that is, is kind of just like a global offset for the whole thing. I'm gonna put our hand back, super creepy. All right, so if you grab this master controller, now you can just move the whole rig around and you can still animate on top of it, you know, like keep whatever whoop, keep whatever animation you have and just kind of move the whole thing around. So it makes it a lot easier to connect multiple little parts to a bigger rig. Okay, so what is left? Last two things are pretty straightforward, but I think they're some of the most helpful in the script. So lock artwork and shy artwork. Okay, so let's just take a look at lock artwork for now. So it's on by default. And when you hit create controllers, you'll see down here the arm artwork that we were working with has a little lock next to it. So you can't, uh, you cannot like select it. And that's intentional because oftentimes when you're working with a larger rig, there's a lot of controllers, a lot of pieces of artwork going on, and you just want to kind of like drag something, select it and move it. And if you have all this artwork live, you'll end up accidentally selecting the artwork or moving something and it's really, really annoying. So just by turning this on by default, you lock the artwork 
and that kind of prevents the accidental selection of the artwork happening. Um, again, something really small, but saves me a ton of time because I hate when that happens. And the second thing, the shy artwork layer, that kind of falls under the same, here I'm gonna undo, the same kind of thing, right? So if you check that on, when you run create controllers, the artwork is, well, we see it's locked, but also down here, you see the little shy guys turned on, okay? And what does that mean? That means if you have like a ton of artwork and you know you wanna hide that and just show your controllers in the timeline, you just shy it and then you turn on this guy up here, right? Cool, artwork's hidden. You see this kind of like dark line here to indicate that. And then you can only focus on you know your controllers and their animation and all that kind of good stuff, right? So it kind of saves you some visual space in your timeline. I find that really helpful. That's kind of it for settings, but let's say you go through and like you do some crazy stuff and you're like, oh my God, I hate it. What did I do? Like none of this works anywhere. Everything's broken. Or you just want to kind of like reset. You might notice there's a button called reset here. You just click that and it'll take everything back to default. And there you are. Otherwise the script will remember your settings um, even if you close it and reopen it to work on something else later. Okay, so that's the kind of fundamentals of how to use create controls. Okay, and so to quickly recap, you can use it on a layer that has puppet pins, right? And we'll make things where the pins are. Um, you can use it on a layer that doesn't have anything and you run it and it'll just create a little controller for that layer at the layer's anchor point. And also you can use it on a shape layer, okay? Or a, a path rather, I should say. So if you select the path down here, not the name of the path, but the path itself, and then you run it, you get nice little controllers for the vertices. One last thing I forgot to mention about a uh, create controllers feature is, uh, let's say you know you have your arm here and you have puppet pins on it, okay? And you have, whoop, let me unlock it. Okay, you have these like three pins right here, but let's say down the road, you really wanna add one more pin right here because this arm needs to bend like that. And you're like, okay, yeah, that's what I need. But if you run create controllers again, it's like, oh my God, you get like double and it's really weird. So there's a way around that. So if you add a new pin to the artwork layer, all you have to do is select that pin, make sure it's highlighted, hit create controllers. And there you go. We'll just create like one little controller just for that pin. Um, and you can do that with multiple ones too. So if you have like, you added two more and you wanna select these two, whoop, not like that, but like that. You hit create controllers and you just get two for that, okay? So that's kind of nice to have if you, you know, change your mind down the road and you wanna add something. Just makes it a little easier. Okay, let's quickly go over what this little question mark help button does. Um, so click that and you'll get this help window that opens and it has just kind of like a brief description of each of the buttons, the controllers, IK and settings. Um, you know, just in case you kind of forgot something, uh, it's a quick reference here. You also get, you know, who the script's registered to, all that good stuff. And then you get a couple buttons down here. One is uh, a link to this tutorial that you're watching. So if you ever need to reference it, it's easy to get to. Um, another is the online user guide that I have on my website that really goes into detail of like how to use each thing. And the last one closes that window. And there you go, quick little help menu for you. Thank you.